Anyone who's seen Return of the Jedi knows that the forest moon of Endor's furball natives pack a far harder punch than their stature and teddy bear likeness suggests. Though, why were these furballs, the Ewoks, such tough little buggers? It's largely due to the environmental pressures of the forest moon, though it's also the result of their primitive yet devastating weapons and traps, and their paganist culture and religion. On top of the Ewoks themselves being quite a brutal people, they were also subject to the brutality of other species on their home moon and species from the galaxy at large, and their history, therefore, is stained with darkness. In this video, we're going to shed some light on that darkness. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Every species is a product of its environment, and the forest moon of Endor, while it did bear great forests brimming with flora and fauna on which to survive, could be quite a savage place. There were not only vast pine and redwood forests, but also deserts, plains, mountains, lakes, and oceans, and plenty of semi-sentience and non-sentience which preyed upon the Ewoks and the moon's other sentient species. In fact, even its sentience, native or otherwise, competed with and slaughtered each other, and while the Ewoks interacted with many other species, for better or for worse, three great examples of which are the Duloks, the Goraks, and the Sanyasins. The Ewoks' distant relative, the Duloks, despite biological ties to Ewoks, strive to conquer our furry little friends. Duloks were gangly, clawed, Grinch-like mammals who envied Ewok life, but instead of building their own version of that life, chose to steal from, enslave, and slaughter the Ewoks. Much of Dulok clothing, in fact, was made of Ewok pelts. Against such a foe, the Ewoks had one choice fight back or become a Duloc sweater. They chose the former option, answering savagery with savagery and honing their skills as warriors. While it's unclear to which planet the terrible Gorax were native, they terrorized Ewoks, both consuming them and keeping them caged up as pets. Gorax themselves were 6 to 30 meter tall furried humanoids with giant bat ears. While semi-sentient, they were able to wield basic weapons, fashion clothing, domesticate boar wolves, and communicate by means of guttural pronunciations. Against so great a foe, the little Ewoks could not stand without their simple yet effective technology. Their go-to weapon against the Gorax was the Tekswi, a swinging log trap which they would release from the height of a canopy like a battering ram and splinter Gorax skulls. A group of Sanyasins, a reptilian humanoid sentient species from Sanyasa 4, crashed on the forest moon and, unable to escape, established a colony there, gaining much of their resources and sadistic pleasure from raiding the Ewoks. These Sanyasins were perhaps the cruelest of the Ewoks' enemies, but even so, the Ewoks rose to the challenge and inflicted upon them a terrible defeat in the ewok sanyasin conflict of 3 ABY, cementing their identity as the underdog warriors capable of taking on physically and technologically superior foes. On top of proving themselves time and time again as capable warriors, the Ewoks were also just fantastic hunters, making use of simple yet effective melee and projectile weapons, debilitating poisons and a plethora of traps, including those capable of snaring boar wolves, which are 3 meter tall wolf-like creatures with tusks. All of this pressure made the Ewoks as hard as diamonds, so it's no wonder they were so savage and effective in the major conflict that took place in 4 ABY, the Battle of Endor. Siding with the Rebel Alliance to defeat Imperial occupation of the Forest Moon and ultimately obliterate the second Death Star, the Ewoks massacred stormtroopers and scout troopers with knives, clubs, axes, spears, slings, slingshots, bows, and various traps, such as the swinging log trap they set for the Gorax. While not every act of violence made the cut in the 1983 PG-rated film, 
You can be rest assured knowing the Ewoks lured Imperial troopers into pit traps, impaling them on wooden spikes, swarmed individual troopers en masse, removing their helmets and dashing out their brains with clubs and axes, and penetrated troop arm with stone arrows, impregnating their bloodstreams with potent neurotoxins and watching them claw helplessly at the air as their lungs and muscles seized and they died. Ewoks, the industrious little buggers, even managed to operate Imperial blasters and use them against the Imperials. Captain Toss, a member of the Imperial survey team that chose the forest moon of Endor to house the shield generator which protected the second Death Star during construction said, We can safely ignore these contemptible little furballs. It's safe to say, the captain later regretted this hasty conclusion. Stormtrooper Hume Tal, interviewed after the Battle of Endor, was disgusted with how the New Republic, which by that point had been established, failed to recognize the Ewok massacre of his unit, Tempest Force, as a war crime, stating, They make those things, those Ewoks, look cute, like stuffed toys. I was there, they weren't anything close to cute, and they slaughtered us like animals. So, we've covered some of the Ewoks' environmental pressures which are themselves evidence of a dark history, yet darker perhaps than those external pressures are the pagan-like practices which make up Ewok culture and religion. Human historian Voren Nal said, Ewoks have a difficult time separating fact from myth. This may be the great strength of their society. Though, I think Ewok spirituality slash religion and how it translates into Ewok culture is part of the reason why they're so savage and why their history can be so dark. A bit of dancing facilitated by music and a swig or five of fermented matte berry is harmless, though Ewok celebrations and festivals often split over into paganistic ritual. At said rituals, the Ewoks would conjure great bonfires and feed all manner of hallucinogenic herb to the flames, causing almost every Ewok in the tree village to trip out hard, and then make blood sacrifices to their vast pantheon of pagan nature gods. Such rites were called dark rituals, and it's likely Luke, Han, and Chewie were about to become three of such sacrifices before the Ewoks flipped their script over the long prophesized golden one, which, unbeknownst to the fanatical teddy bears, was merely the protocol droid C-3PO. The tone of the film, again, it was rated PG, stripped this particular scene of suspense and horror, but if we look at it objectively, the Ewoks were about to murder three beings to sate their golden deity incarnate. I'd say that's pretty dark. But before we conclude, there are a few other random bits of dark Ewok history you need to hear. While the Ewoks smashed Imperial skulls during the Battle of Endor, many fell to Imperial blasters and many were as slaves. And after the rebels destroyed the Death Star, Imperial propaganda spread the false notion that debris from the Death Star affected the forest moon's environment so heavily that it led to the extinction of every Ewok on it. To those digesting this false story, which was literally deemed the Endor Holocaust, it would have indeed seemed like a dark, dark fate for the Ewoks, and it's for this reason worth noting as a part of their dark history, even if it was propaganda. Another fun fact, Ewoks also spread into the galaxy as not only slaves, but mercenaries, such as the female Ewok mercenary Treek, who was all fighting in the Galactic War as far back as 3640 BBY. And all teddy bears in space fighting wars? That's a pretty dark image in itself. And lastly, perhaps the darkest aspect of Ewok history. During the Clone Wars, Ewok meat was a delicacy. That's right, far, far from the forest moon of Endor, out on the remote desert world of Abafar in the Outer Rim, in a fancy little diner on Pons Aura, they were serving dehydrated Ewok meat. Ewok jerky. I'll take the teriyaki, thanks. I'm sorry if I burst anyone's Ewoks are cute bubble, but the evidence doesn't lie. Ewoks were battle-hardened, drug-smoking pagans with a taste for blood, though they were also prone to savagery equal to their own. Imagine if Return of the Jedi wasn't PG. I think that's terrifying. But what do you think? Do you think Ewok history counts as dark? Would teriyaki Ewok jerky really be the best flavor? Either way, how are you enjoying our videos on the dark truths of Star Wars species? Are there any other dark histories that you want to shed some light on? 
let us know down in the comments section below. And just before you go, guys, as per usual, please do check out the links in the description below if you want to join our main Geatsleys Discord where you can chat with other Star Wars fans, our Geatsleys Gaming Network where you can play games with other Star Wars fans, and the Patreon if you want to help support the channel more than you already are by watching this video. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.